and I'm one of the co-founders of the ATX Television Festival. Thank you. I just want to say, this is our first school theater, and I might cry right now. So, <laughs> thanks so much for wanting to be here. Um, we are, the cast has been wrangled. Um, so, yes, I'm going to introduce Meg Masters, our moderator, um, who's from TV Line, and she'll welcome the cast and creator. back there. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out today um, and sitting through such a wonderful episode. Um, okay, so first up we have Dax Shepard. And Mae Whitman is here. And um, a wonderful musician who you've seen on the show before, Landon Pig. Fill this up because I'm going to pick a more comfortable seat. If we're oh, not do gonna, it. Are there nine of us? You move right there in the middle. Is there? I don't know. We might be filling it up. Um, and we also have Jason Ritter. And um, the music supervisor on the show, Liza Richardson. And the man responsible for it all, Mr. Jason Cadence. I've, I've spoken about Liza in a magazine interview, but we've never met. This is the first time. It's so exciting. Hi, boss. Great yeah. Yeah. yeah, feast your eyes. I am wearing a Dylan uh, Panthers t shirt. Uh, only true fan in this uh, cinema, it would seem. Hang on. Um. <laughs> so, I am. I'm playing to the crowd. I'm gonna. I got um, Longhorns that I'm gonna bring out in at five minutes into this thing. Okay. So first, congratulations. I think this is the first time we've seen you guys all together, but you renewed for season four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the finale for season three would have been pretty fitting for you know if the renewal hadn't come. There were a few things left up in the air, obviously, but um. The wedding was kind of a good wrap-up. Did you approach it that way, just in case you didn't get the renewal? Um, well, you know, it's one of those things you always have to contend with when you have um, <laughs> uh, sh shows that are, you know, on the bubble. And um, I've had an entire career of shows on the bubble. My, you know, every, every, every you know, it, I seem to always kind of be in that situation where you don't know. But actually, we were really, um, <clears throat> we felt like such a, um, great momentum within the you know the the, the show creatively um, that you know building that we we um, I was thinking more of sort of having a finale that would be on one hand really emotionally satisfying but on the other hand leave enough open and sort of sort of like you know to have enough that we would we would be looking toward you know, kind of what comes next, and so I was, I was, I was actually very positive about the show coming back uh, when we were sort of designing the, the last few episodes of the season. And then just kind of building off of that, you, Jason, are here, and so I think it's safe to assume we'll see Mark back next season in some capacity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh good. Oh good. Someone more charming than me on the show. Well, that's well, great news. You're more charming again this year? Great. You've rendered me obsolete. Congratulations. Welcome back. Get your own show though, okay? But for Crosby, actually, you got sort of the biggest um, wrap up in the finale. You had a happy ending and everything. Um, I had, yes, I had made a cash up. payment to Caleb's. <laughs> Tell my am strong. This is it, please. Are you excited to sort of build on that though? I mean, that was sort of a will they, won't they, everything since the get go, and now it's happened. I'm very much split because um, I love working with Joy Bryant, which presumably means I'll work with her even more day to day. Uh, and then sadly, I won't be hooking up with Minka Kelly anymore. It's more heartbreaking than the pleasure of working with Joy. So it's. <laughs> It's either a lose-lose or a win-win, depending on how you look at it. I'm married, so it's a lose-lose for me. But again, I do love Joy Bryant, and it'll be a blast to spend more time with her in scenes. And if he cheats, he cheats! I don't know, it's, you know, people cheat. People are human, they're 
they're fallible. They make mistakes, and then they ask for forgiveness, and then we forgive them, and we move on, and then they cheat again and again and again. <laughs> Jason Kanem's may tell you this, one of our, um, our earliest communications between the pilot when the series started shooting is, um, I think a lot of the actors were sending very serious, heartfelt um, emails about what they wanted their characters to do in the series, and I, set, I sent him an email that said, you know, I've been thinking a lot, my character would most definitely drive a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> On account of how many girls he'll be dating and hooking up with, it's just that Lamborghini seems very conducive. That was my one creator piece of anyway. <laughs> Uh, he was a compromise, he's got a motorcycle. Um, um, May, we have most of us here at the festival been treated to some music from you this weekend. And from you <laughs> um, you've been here on the show before. Is there any kind of plan to sort of integrate more of, of Amber's musical side into the show, especially after we No, there is not. <laughs> no, we, I mean, I, we, um, it's been such a, um, pleasure and such a great part of the show and you know we when we wrote that story of um, the first time she played of the at the open mic night um, I hadn't really heard May sing yet or play um, I was told that she did and I trusted that and um, it was really such a um, it was such a, a, a beautiful um, song that you wrote you you and Landon you, Landon wrote it? You wrote it together? Landon wrote that one. Landon wrote that one. Some cast members were crying in the scene while they watched her yeah. because they were so proud of how pretty she members, sounded. Some cast members still leave me a voicemail sometimes at night that's three minutes long of them singing that song. <laughs> oh, their interpretation of that song. It makes me cry hysterically the next morning. So this is a little inside into our lives. But yes, um, the, that song too was, you know, we were talking, I was actually talking earlier with Jason and stuff, you know, it's really nice for Amber to, it's like the one point, you know, she's so confident and sort of sarcastic and, you know, she's got this wall up um, and then there's just like, you know, whenever she plays music, it's like the real point where, and I was saying like, for me personally, it's the same way of like, I am like so vulnerable whenever I play any music so it's like it just like even if I wanted to hide it I couldn't so it's it's really nice to see me and Amber you know come through with that like real vulnerability and um, and you know to have that kind of music is great and I was saying also you know that open mic night is really funny because I was like genuinely super nervous because I had like my entire Braverman family sitting right there, like genuinely like misty eyed and ready. And then I had like our whole crew, family was like excited and watching. And then my whole family came <laughs> to the set that day and they were like sitting behind it. So it was like, I would look up and there was like three layers of like terrifying <laughs> things happening. So, but it also And we said to her right before she went up, we're gonna judge the <laughs> shit out of you. <laughs> Are in the shitter, so. uh, but you know it was like really great obviously we have a very familial vibe and stuff and the fact that I'm able to like incorporate you know I was mentioning in the music panel how Landon you know I can't imagine someone else uh, anyone better that's such an incredible songwriter that really you know is close to Amber as close to Amber as you can be which is being close to me um, you know he he is and so it's really nice because I think it really is a through line through her eyes to you know music and stuff so thanks for helping us with that landon and some of you guys would or maybe would or wouldn't know i don't know how rabid some of the fans are but you guys also had a song that just played during one of the scenes and we never drew attention to the fact that it was you guys and that was a beautiful song as well what yeah, was that couple, go ahead and sing that for us right that now was <laughs> That was my polite way of saying get on. <laughs> that was, was it maybe was it Gardenia? I think maybe the at the end we we had like Amber playing. He's got, he's got it. I mean, what is it called? Guitar Guitar Lele. Don't play his games. He made that up. It's a, <laughs> it's a miniature guitar, is what it's called. Um, but yeah, you know that was a. Don't get to rename instruments later. Just because you're cute we're and talented. Here, we're in Let's just try to have some fun. Um, I think that was cool. Because What's your tie like, called? I got a different name too. Is it so cute? Um, that was cool because we did, we added it at the end of the, kind of the whole episode and it was like a way to bring it back in because I'd been noodling on the ukulele in an earlier scene. So to, uh, to then have it, Lance got something to say. What's, what, uh, what is it? I did think of um, a name for this. I did make one up actually. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> last night, and if you go into a, a, a tiki bar um, anywhere, if I travel with drinks, you might be able to relate. But this obviously is not yours, you know, or yours. Uh, it's black tie. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say that, that he tried really to, like, at the bar he tried to rope me into tricking. He was like, no, if this wasn't, you know, I, I mean, I know I'm wearing this tie, but if you were wearing it, what is? And I was just like, I don't want to do this. I'm drinking. I just want to have some fun. My tie. I get it. I get the joke. But uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty clever. <laughs> Landon will be in the lobby for riddles later. <laughs> Anyone else is feeling like a lack of riddles? Um, Liza, how does this aspect of the show, them being so musical and, and contributing, how does it add to your job? Or I mean, do you like having that aspect of the show as opposed to just picking everything on your own from an outside point of view? Well, I definitely don't pick everything on my own. That's one of the myths of the music supervisors. Supposedly, like super, all we do is decide on what goes in and it's where the, you know, that's where the last word, but that's far from the truth. It, a lot of it comes from the script. Um, the actors, definitely May's character, and now we have the studio. Um, so, did that Have you ever seen anyone make an uglier face while playing the drums than me? <laughs> no, never. It's the worst face ever made. Really um, now, Jason, you worked with Jason on Parenthood and then you had another project. But what is it that, you know, people here that are working with Jason Kadams and on these series, they have so much freedom and it's so different to being on such a structured show. So is that part of what draws you to working with him again or what is it that keeps you kind of coming back? Besides the paycheck and the job. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think that's, that's exactly what it is. Not the paycheck and the job. Uh, the, uh, it, it is special and I think that um, it's a it's a set where actors are really respected and and um, and there's a there's a, a collaborative feeling. <laughs> what they do a lot of times, um, you'll be doing something and they'll shoot it from one direction and then the other direction. And you have to make sure that it all kind of matches up. Where the way that Parenthood is shot, they have usually about three cameras going at all times, and and so those those little spontaneous moments are are captured um, and. Uh, and the writing is so wonderful, and um, and then you're also allowed to um, to throw in a little thing, and, and you know they they'll, they'll use it or they won't. And the the great thing too is is you come to work and you play all day essentially, and you are working with all these other incredible actors, and and uh, you know sometimes the danger with actors improvising is we we can go on and on and on and on and not and forget to tell a story. Uh, and so, what's really incredible is when they get into the editing room. They'll take, you know, they'll take some of those moments, but keep keep the story moving forward. And it really, it's always like the best version of, of those scenes. That you do. So I, yeah, and also um, working with Lauren is wonderful. <laughs> Still bugs that Seth guy. You know what's so weird is I like in in season two where I was I was gone do, doing um, a, the event I I would get really seriously jealous of of Lauren's boyfriend. It was really we weird. all get weird weirdly like jealous of each other's other relationships that are parenthood relationships. Like sometimes Lauren will like. Be like, I had lunch with Alexis Spadell today, and I'll uh, just be like, really? How, how's she doing? <laughs> I'm really so upset. Like, we have like a sad monopoly on each other. And they, and they, they won't give us a storyline together today. Hey guys, what's happening? Here? I don't know. Jason knows. I think I've made it. I've sent him a letter a day saying, give me a storyline with Dust. I use so my it, big. It's going to get through some soon. But that is cool about Amber, too, is that she's kind of like been able to sort of like jump in with everybody. I was thinking about, I've pretty much had like a storyline with everybody except you pretty much, which it's gonna happen, I can, I can feel it. They, they, so, they think that'll be the official jump the shark moment when we have a <laughs> storyline together. <laughs> we'll see, you'll we'll record see. at the studio. Yeah, oh, yeah. Bingo. I think we got some good, good stuff, Lynn. I bet Jason knows a lot more about that than any of us yeah. do. And maybe I'll make a super ugly face and drum behind you. <laughs> <while you're>... <laughs> <laughs> You guys, Dax and May, you haven't worked together so much, as you just said, but you guys were sort of coming off of a lot of features and things like that when you joined Parenthood. 
what was it like going from something so structured to a project like Parenthood where it is so free? Well, I want, I want to say something before that about Mae Whitman, which was when I first started working on the show, I was so bummed out that she was such a, a better actor than I was. Because <laughs> she's so much younger than me. And then I looked her up and then realized she had been acting twice as long as me, and then I didn't feel nearly as bad, because she was a baby acting in, um, what's the alcoholic movie? Come on, is it Dick Camp I mean drugs? When a man loves, when a man man loves a woman. Yes. So, yes, Mae Whitman has been doing this forever, and um, she's just the most spectacular uh, actor alive. How about alive. this guy? And, well, everybody sees okay. him in there, all of a sudden he's like making oh, everybody boy. cry just by showing his face. No, I'm story. flattering you, you just fight out. out. <laughs> I will say this is the best job I've ever had. Um, Me too, by far. The, uh, for many reasons, creatively it's super fulfilling. Um, Kadams has a super involved, you actually... Um, feel like your opinions wanted, desired, it's, it's, it's unlike any other creative experience. And then the lifestyle of it is way better than any project any of us have ever done. Also because the manner in which Jason shoots with three cameras and the looseness of it and we go fast, we don't work long hours, there's 14 cast members, none of us work five days a week, 20 hours, I mean it's just the lifestyle's great. Creatively, it's great. We would all do this show well into our 90s if NBC let us. At least 90s. I mean, yeah. I feel, I really cannot stress enough what an incredible job it is in every aspect. I mean, like you said, doing movies, you know, a lot. I sort of have like a short attention span, and I was like, I wonder what it's going to be like to be the same character year after year, you know. But I was actually talking with Jason how cool it is that... Especially for Amber, you know, it's such a, it's such an interesting, important, strange time in someone's life. That sort of those ages between like seventeen and then getting into like twenty one area. It's like we've really gotten to see this. You don't really get to see that on TV too much. Like a teenage girl kind of going from really being a, a young, immature teenager and all this kind of stuff to kind of understanding and trying to place her blame other places and her anger and stuff. I mean, she's really done like a lot of of growing and everything. So and. So it's fascinating for me, just even creatively, you know, to be a part of that. It just always feels new and everything. And, you know, it really does feel like a new kind of frontier of TV working because it's so fresh and creative and in the moment. I mean, everybody is there, like, wanting to help and be interactive and make it something. You know, there's just like with a lot of Kadem's shows, obviously, Friday Night Lights, it's like it's the through line is just the heart. You know, it's like just like we all love this family and these people and their story and you know so that sort of prevails over everything else and I think that's like really obvious you know? if anyone's interested I'm gonna have one more unique element to our show and that is I think typically on an ensemble show especially if all the actors are just starting out there there becomes this cat fighty atmosphere like who's getting the most time who's getting this and that I think because our show, so many of the actors have had these great careers already leading up to the show. Everyone's at a place where they, they just really are grateful for the work environment and no one's really being mean or catty or it's just super supportive and everyone gets along way better than a cast of 14 people should ever get along, I think. I was just thinking, if I had come to this, I would want to ask like scandalous questions like, who hooked up with the chef or something? I just want to make sure we get to a portion of this afternoon where people get to ask the question they really want to know other than creative bullshit Let questions about how we feel creatively as overpaid actors. Well, I am going to open it up in just a minute. <laughs> but, Jason, for you, do you have any guilty pleasures that you kind of like to bring up that you like? Any good teasers you can About season four? Well, we yeah. really just started um, in the writer's room uh, about a week ago, so we're just starting to do it. The, the one thing that's really interesting that I was talking to these guys about earlier is, you know, on the it's the fourth season of the show, and a lot of times by the time you get to the third and fourth season on a show, you know, if you get back into the writer's room, you're thinking, oh, God, you know, well, we did that story, what's left to do? And the actors are thinking, my God, do I have to come do this same person again? But the beautiful thing about this show is it's, it, ha it is just so creatively, it remains so creatively exciting to do. And we, you know, from the moment we got back into the writer's room, it was just exciting to talk about what, what, what the journey of these characters are going to go on like what May was talking about, that is that these characters really, 
get to evolve over time. So we get to look at, you know, next year, like May, May uh, you know, Amber, maybe. Um, one of the things we talked about is that she gets a job with these guys in the recording studio. Um, which makes, which kind of makes perfect, makes perfect sense. And for Crosby and, and Jasmine, it's really looking at the first year of a marriage, which is something we haven't really had a chance to do on the show. So it's, it's what we sort of look to is what are the um, <clears throat> kind of like opportunities to, you know, you know, the first thing is what are the opportunities to tell stories that haven't been, we haven't been able to, um, you know, sort of cover yet. And, um, and one of the things about that is also trying, what, what's great about having such a large cast, we have, um, you know, um, a, I guess it's 15 series regulars on the show, and then plus, aside from that, a, a, an incredible, there's, no, there are, yeah, there's that's 40, great. 50. Um, and then all this guest cast, are, are, you know, around it that has built over the years to be really part of, you know, really part of the show. And, um, and so what's exciting also is like being able to sort of find different, you know, there's still relationships, like you guys have said, you haven't had stuff together. There's still relationships that we haven't really been able to examine yet. Like in this episode that we saw today, the story between, with Amber and Max was a story that we sort of designed in the writer's room because I wanted to see those two actors you kind of work together just because I felt like it would be really interesting to see. And, and, um, and you know, that's another thing that's really nice about the show is that we have the, um, you know, is to, what, the more that we can kind of continue to do it, the more that we sort of mine. And I think you really see, at least from my point of view, from where the show started, as wonderful as it was from, the, from in my mind from the beginning, it's, the show just deepens. It deepens with every you know season, and there are literally certain storylines. I think back on in the second in the second season from that storyline where it was discovered that you and Minka slept together through the end of that season. That I felt like it was just. I felt like oh my god, this show somehow has like found another gear, and I felt it again in, in various times in this past season. And so the exciting thing is, it's not we're just. It's not like we're doing a show that just kind of is, you know, we, we like it and we're continuing to do it. We're, we're doing a show where we continually try to go deeper, to find new flavors, to find new things. And um, it's really, uh, it's really been great. And it's also because we have, you know, you know to have the um, privilege of working with the cast, um, you know, it really is an amazing, um, cast to write for, and I, as a as as a writer, kind of learn so much from them. When I see episodes come back and I see what they've done, um, you know, it's I can then start to try to write toward that. And so it's it's just really been a joy to do. Do you think there'll be any flashbacks in season four of me and Minka hooking up? <laughs> Obviously, we don't have the film for because we didn't have the foresight. Angles, yeah. angles, locations. I mean, it's assumed we did that in her apartment, but we never saw it, uh, specifically whether it was on a uh, Caribbean beach somewhere or uh, maybe a ski chalet in the Alps. I don't know. These are questions that I assume the viewers have. And I think we can answer them. 